<laughs> so my name is Esmo Thiessen. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I've been doing Jitsu since the end of 2010. And since 2014, I've done it full time. So uh, this has been my uh, career for quite some years now. Why did you start it? I think I always had an interest of martial art, but then I remember there was like a post in the paper and I didn't think too much about it. But then we saw like a martial art movie and they did some submissions and then uh, we just figured out we want to try it out and then I was hooked from day one. Which was the movie? I think it was like No Surrender, Never Surrender, I don't know, some sort of martial art movie. It's really hard to really explain why I love it. There's so many factors. There's the constant learning, evolving, expressing yourself, it's meeting people. It's this whole thing and it's very clear when you improve. It's very like, I played uh, soccer for 11 years and there's very hard to see the improvement in a sense because it's a team sport. But in Jitsu, if you get better, you see it immediately. I was supposed to become an engineer. That was like my path. But then after high school, I took one year off just to really pursue Jitsu. And then I was thinking of going back after that year, but I just kept taking a year off, a year off and here I am. So I never took anything. I think I always gravitated toward guard. That came very natural for me. In the beginning also did a lot of takedowns and passing. I did kind of everything. But then I started really focusing on the guard at the end of white belt. I actually started doing bare ball back then, so very early. And I started studying like crazy. So when I was like a blue belt, I kind of had a pretty advanced guard in a sense. But then my like passing wasn't that great. And then has, as the year has gone, I've been working a lot on my passing, also my wrestling. So now I try to be as complete as I can. I really like to pass and I've done it for many years in, the, in training. So I really want to be able to do it more in competition. And when I pass, I really, I really enjoy it because you can really move around and it's different because I played guard for so many years and done that in competition. So it's nice to just be on top and, and do that. So I, I don't know, I really just like to pass cards. To be honest, it was like uh, started with like from kind of I think Baron Ball and double pull or whatever, and used that from there. And then you could kind of do it when they were standing, and then it evolved from all kind of positions. So it was a very natural uh, progression to it. It wasn't like we just sat down and all of a sudden there's the matrix, you know. It just happened very naturally, and eventually we saw you can do it from so many positions, and it became a system in a sense. But it's, so I'm, I'm actually not teaching anything at the academy, so I'm not the, the instructor here, that's Damo Nasi. So the way I help the guys I'm around is, I, d I don't like, maybe one day I would like it or whatever, but I don't like to be like this coach. What I like to do is to help, and if I feel there's, they want to have help, then I will really, I'm going to do my best to help them. So if I, the way I teach is not to tell people a lot, it's just that I roll with them and then I give them feedback. So if I see it's like, oh, you should do this, this, like whatever I feel in that moment, that's how I like to teach instead of bringing a group in. Of course, for my seminars, I do that, but in my home, I don't do that. I roll with each individual and I see, ah, you should maybe do that, and then try to give my best uh, advices. Okay, so learning by experience. Maybe. Yeah, and also, yeah, be, being with them, rolling with them, and then telling them, in a sense. I think we have a bunch of potential. There are so many talented guys coming up. So I think we just, what Max is doing now with this camp and stuff like this, training together and also seeing like, just getting this idea that we can all train together is super beneficial. And especially in Norway, it has huge potential to organize it more and get more structure into it. So that's one way and maybe, I think a major one would be to, to find, get organized and be able to pay. Because it's super hard in the beginning to be able to pay for competitions and then maybe try to do it full time and all of this and there's not too much support. It's been amazing. Like I've been training with John Thomas first, with Max. I went to Ash Williams and the guys trained a bit with them, with Adam, with Dara, like all the best guys. And it's been really cool because we all are very similar. Maybe we have slightly different personalities, but we have the same passion. So it's very easy to connect with them and also just learning from these guys. They're like very experienced. They know so much. So it's been amazing. Honestly, it's been really cool. You are still going to train, or are you not going? Uh, I haven't been there uh, in a while, but Tommy has been down visiting me a couple of times. Actually, the last year I've been trying to get into strength training because that's not, I've never really done strength training for long periods. I've done it maybe a couple of months here and there, but never really done it. So, what I've basically been doing is body weight after jitsu, like pull ups and stuff. 
So what I want to do now is to get stronger. I want to lift more. So I've been training a bit less jiu-jitsu and then doing more strength training. So a combination of doing strength, maybe climbing and all of this, I think I'm going to test my nervous system and make me stronger than just doing jiu-jitsu. You know? 100%. I, uh, everyone that meets me will hear me talking shit about the steroids. And because I, I think it's it's so like accepted, you will hear people getting caught for it and no one really cares. It's weird. And I, I'm thinking also about the youths and everyone coming into this culture of it being kind of normalized and people like, I don't know, they think they have to do this thing. And I don't like the mentality that so many people have that they say that everyone does it. Every, to be the best, you have to do steroids. I know so many high level guys that don't do it and have great results. So I like to kind of like, I want to at least do my part to say that it's not necessary. You don't have to do it. You can train smarter. You can be, you have to think in maybe different terms, but you can find ways to do it independent of steroids or not. Exactly. That's what everyone believe. It's just set belief in our culture that I think must be broken because it's not the truth. It's not based upon truth. It's based upon fear or you don't want to do it. You just rationalize when you don't, you're not able to do it. You find an excuse like everyone does it. So there's no reason to do it because I don't want to do it, you know, but it's not truth. I know for a fact that these guys are not doing it and they're like, it is possible. I know other names too, big names that don't do it. And it is possible. And that's what we have to get across in a sense. If I can offer you a super fight, who would Mika you? Galvao, 100%. And I would really like to go again in IBJF rules. I fought him in Abu Dhabi and uh, there he submitted me. But I think with IBJF, that would be better for me because I could actually grab the pants. Most of my main attacks are based upon grabbing the pants, which I can't do in that tournament. So I would really like to do like an IBJF uh, rules with him and see how it goes. So Polaris! <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> Who's your favorite European um, fighter? That's for sure Tommy. I think he has the coolest style. He, he can do basic jiu-jitsu, he can do advanced jiu-jitsu. And I really like his mentality when he goes out there. He, he's really opening up and trying to attack, which exposes him to maybe be submitted or lose sometimes. But I have a lot of respect for his style because he just goes out there independent of who it is. He don't care about if it's the final, if it's a world champion, whatever. He goes out there and really do what he can to win the match in a good way. Female? Uh, for sure, Fionn Davis. She's been doing so good. And uh, I've trained with her as well and I know how tough she is. She's so strong, technical, precise. So that's for sure Fionn Davis.